Up until Oka, I don't believe there had ever been as significant an amount of tension that impacted the whole country in the way it did. In the summer of the Oka crisis, I turned 11. My family lived on a street that led directly to the disputed land. It was a bloody day at the Mohawk Indian community in Oka, Quebec, near Montreal. Cut fire. What kind of people are you? There's children here and you're shooting tear gas at us. I'll never trust police ever again. And there was a real distinct group that wanted to like shoot it out. Which kind of makes sense. And after the barricades calm down, you know, you're kind of scratching your head. Well, what the heck just happened? What happened? It took me a while to understand how powerful that summer was. It united all Indian people. We're all standing as one. First time in, uh, first time in history, a matter of fact. With time, I noticed how that had a positive impact on me, the crisis. It gave us pride to raise our voice to be heard. They called me the one-man roadblocker. The one-man roadblocker, yeah. I like it. And it was genocide. The Indian residential school was plain and simple genocide. We've been at this fight for 300 years. Oka happened for a reason. It needed to shake this country to understand that Native issues are really important, Indigenous issues are really important. It's that fire that sparked thousands of more fires. He tried to say, your language is no good. Your housing is no good. The way you live is no good. The one thing they never convinced us, they were never able to, is that this land is not ours. 